Chunk 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 Everybody, hello and welcome to another edition of Practical MDO. Today I'll be showing you how to use the N squared or N2 diagram to better understand your models. The N2 diagram is an invaluable resource that OpenMDO makes automatically. It allows you to take a look at your model, understand what's going on, and really get into the nuts and bolts of your groups, connections, and parameters. Today's lesson is really more of a tutorial where I will show you how I use the N2, what all the buttons do, kind of the first few steps to look at. Again, I, I show the N2 diagram in many different portions of this lecture series. So I highly suggest, I don't know, fully watching this lesson. If you're watching it right now, great. Stick around. We'll go through a lot of important tips that will help you later on. So today's lesson is definitely not going to be focused on actually creating the N2 models and the extreme basics of what that means on the OpenMDO side of things. That's because there's already a fantastic OpenMDO doc which shows you how to call code to do this, how to instantiate the N2 diagram, and how to look at it. But I want today's lesson to really be me walking you through how you should perceive this diagram, what you should do with it, what it means for your models. So that being said, let's jump over to an actual N squared diagram. I will use N squared and N2 interchangeably here. It's the exact same thing. So here, let's start with a relatively simple, but still kind of complex model. I'll walk through what all of these buttons on the left mean, but first I wanna make sure we can read some things on the screen better. Usually when I first open this up, I like to make the text as big as possible. That helps me see what all the variables, groups, and components are called. Additionally, it's good to kind of play around with this option right here which changes the height of the model. You can make it a little stout guy, you can make it 200% big, and then you have to scroll up and down. Now for this model, we don't need to make it that big, but for other models, you may need that kind of resolution to really get into the nuts and bolts. Let's take a look at what we have here. We have a toolbar on the left, which has a few different icons, each of which might have a menu associated with it. In the center, we have this actual N squared diagram. This is where all the variables, groups, and components are shown together. The things on the diagonals are variables, and things on the off-diagonals are how those variables are coupled together or connected. Items that go from this way, right and down, are known as feed-forward coupling, whereas items that are right here on this lower triangular part are known as feedback coupling. You can think of your model here on the left as going from top down, left to right. So we have cycle first, then obj-comp, and then comp1. And on the right hand side here, we have solvers. This may or may not mean something to you and you can choose to toggle them off. Uh, for now, let's just toggle them off. We'll get more into what those solvers mean. But for now, I really want to focus on just these N squared actual blocks. Let's explain what's going on on the left side here. So this kind of muted blue shows any kind of groups you have. We have the model group at the top level, seller MDA, and cycle. These are all groups. Cycle lives within seller MDA and seller MDA lives within model. Any of these more vibrant blues, kind of light blues, are components. So D1 and D2 are components, obj-comp is a component. And then anything within these components would be a variable or a parameter. These can be inputs or outputs. In this case, things that are orange or teal are inputs, and this kind of like light green is an output. So you can see Z, X, and Y2 are all inputs into D1. Y1 is an output. D2 has Z and Y1 as inputs, and Y2 is an output. Now, if you're sharp, you've been kind of looking at this using your mind, you see, oh, I have Y2 as an input here and Y2 as an output here. Yes, there is this kind of feedback coupling being represented by this square. If you click on it, you can save that in place, and that kind of helps you trace some of the variables. You can see, okay, well, Y2 goes there, goes back up to D1, but it also comes over here, goes into an obj comp. If you click on any one of these off diagonals, you can uh, kind of freeze them on the screen. And if you want to unfreeze them, you just click on them again. That's a left click that I'm doing. Now let's say that we want to zoom into cycle here. I can left click and we zoom in here. And this is all the view that we get. Again, this is kind of a simple problem. It's not really a, a great idea to zoom in here, but I can. If I want to collapse one of these, say I'm really not interested in obj comp right now, I can right click on it, boom, that bad boy is collapsed, it's gone. It's got this nice little icon here that kind of shows how it's collapsed. Now when it's collapsed, it doesn't hide these connections. We still see Y2 going into it, but all of a sudden it's just Y2 going into obj comp. 
We don't know what it's doing in ObjectConf. We don't have all the details about what's going on. If we right click, we can open that up and oh, okay, now we get many more details. Okay, so I'm gonna keep looking at this model just a little bit more. I'm sure you have a lot of questions because there's a lot going on here, but I hope we get to them. Auto IVC is a group that OpenMDO creates automatically. So IVC stands for in-depth var comp or independent variable component. It's where any sort of inputs for your model live. So you can think of Z and X in this auto IVC as kind of being the source term. It's where Z and X originate. If Z and X are used elsewhere in your model, then this auto IVC creates them within your model. You usually don't have to look at them. You usually don't have to understand what the auto IVC is doing. So that's why it usually comes collapsed when you open up an N2 diagram. Now let's look over here at the toolbar and see what some of these options are. We have a search function, which is great. I love this. If I type Y2 here, and hit enter. It's going to collapse everything that's not Y2. Then I can see what's going on with just Y2. Now again, this is a simple model, but if I had a much more complex model with a lot of variables, this is a godsend. You really need that search function. If I get into a view that I don't really like, I need to collapse some of it, and I want to go back to my original home view, I can hit this home button. That's fantastic. I love that too. You can go back in views by hitting this button. You can go forward in views by hitting this button. This one, I personally never really use. Control variable collapsing. Actually, let's see what this does. Wow, it collapsed almost everything. I, I don't want that here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand this. Collapse all variables, an entire model. Expand all variables. So what this really means is that if you have a view and you want to kind of zoom in here, and then collapse the variables in this view, and then come back to this top level, these will stay collapsed, but these ones are not collapsed. And so that's kind of a neat way of controlling which ones are collapsed, and you can do that based on your current view. I'm going to uncollapse them here because I don't actually want them collapsed, but hey, that's good to know, right? Now this is a neat one, this little eye with a circle. Show detailed node information, oh my gosh. Look at this. When I mouse over any one of these now, it's giving me such detailed node information. It tells you a lot of things, like the array and the shape of it. This is a two by one array. It tells you the values in it, five and two. Well, what I really like about this is the absolute and promoted name. If I click, this stays open. The absolute name and the promoted names often come in handy a lot when you're doing model building. If you need to connect some different parts of your model, if you need to understand where these variables live, this is great. I love these so much. And so you can often, you know, if you're like, hey, I know Z is somewhere in this model, I don't know where. First, search for it. Then take a look at the absolute and promoted name here. That's wonderful, that's great. I'll click off of that for now. Okay, if you want to, to see the connections, you can turn them all on. Wow, cool, look at my model. Bada bing, bada boom, it's going in, it's coming out. Again, for the simple model, it kind of makes sense. For more complex ones, it might be a lot. Let's turn these solvers back on. Okay, so I just turned these solvers back on. Let's talk about what this means. If I say, show me the nonlinear solvers. Okay, showing me NL run once over here. If I say, show me the linear solvers, I can see the linear solvers that I got going on right here. Well, hey, this can also help you debug things. This cycle right here has some feedback coupling. There should be a linear solver here. There shouldn't be this run once solver. So this, panel is great to see. Okay, either my solvers are not set up in the way I expect, or I need to put a solver here. Uh, this was added to the N-squared diagram based on direct feedback from users who wanted a better way to kind of see, okay, I have this coupling here. I should have a solver on the cycle group. That makes sense. You know, it's a really helpful tool. I'm going to turn the solvers off now for simplicity. This option right here shows you the optimization variables. So if you're doing an optimization and you want to highlight where the optimization variables might live, you can turn them on here. I think what I'm showing you here is not necessarily an optimization problem, so it's not really relevant for this. I already showed you the text height. You can make it small. You can make it big. Now, this one is neat. It's the collapse depth. If you want to collapse everything below a certain level, you just have the biggest things in your model, the top level things. But now you can you can say, okay, well, I actually want to see the cycle and the obj comp, but I, I want to keep the variables inside of them collapsed. Or you can open this up to everything. This shows you all the variables. Here it only goes from two to five, but there are some 
models where it can go from 2 to 11. You can have an extremely nested N2. I'll show an example about that later. I've been showing you this already, but this is the kind of fit thing where you can fit it to your screen based on your screen size or what you're trying to do. This right here saves an SVG. This is neat. This is a vector graphics code. You can use N2 diagrams in your papers or in your PowerPoint presentations. The SVG means that it's vector graphics. It's not rasterized. What this means is that you won't get a pixelated view. Additionally, if you want to save a view, you can save this view and then load it later on. Now, the neat part about N2s, and maybe I should have said this sooner, is that it's an HTML file. So you can just grab this HTML file, send it to your, your buddy, your colleague, and say, hey, I'm looking at this model. This is one we're working on together. Can you look at this with me? And they're like, yeah, I'll open it up. It's fully portable. You just send the HTML. That's all they need. They don't need the OpenMDO model. They don't need anything else. So you can send this to anybody. They don't, they don't need to install your package or anything else. That's, that's pretty slick. I like that. Okay, and down here, and maybe I should introduce this first. Maybe I will introduce this first through the magic of video editing. You can display a help window. Whoa, it just tells you everything that I just told you, but it's written down and it uses the correct words. Sometimes I use the wrong words. This is great. Always refer to this if you want. Additionally, down here, I can say show legend. It tells you exactly what each one of these symbols means. Again, this is the correct and precise way that things are shown here. I'm kind of telling you how I think about things and how I approach this n squared diagram. So with this relatively simple system examined, let's go on to a more complex n squared diagram for something else that I'm working on. Here again, I'm going to first crank up the text size. This allows me to better see what's going on. And then maybe I can uh, change the fit a little bit, get a little bit more in here. Maybe I don't care about the solvers. Okay, let's take a look here. This is for a trajectory problem. I don't want you to focus too much on the physical nature of this problem or what I'm trying to model here. Just know that we have a more complex system. I can uncollapse some of these things here. I'll turn this to six. Let's, let's see what we got. Oh my gosh. This, there's already a lot here. Maybe I'll turn it to five. Oh, there's still a lot. Maybe I'll turn it to four. Okay, so here I'm just kind of playing around, trying to get a sense for what I actually want to look at. Here might be a nice view of this model. I see all of the feed forward coupling. I kind of get a feel for what's going on here. Now I may want to really zoom into something. Let's say this RHS all is something that's interesting to me. I can left click on it, zoom in here. Maybe I want to uncollapse all variables in the current view because I want to see what's going on here. Oh, that's great. Now I get some more information here. Maybe I'm searching for backwards coupling. Maybe I'm looking for some lower triangular coupling because I know that's something in my model. So I'm going to collapse this. Well, when I see some right here, I'm going to collapse this here too so I can get a better look at this. Wow. Wow, this is exactly what I was looking for. Here I'm looking for, okay, EAS has some backwards coupling. It comes back this way. That's the beauty of the N2. I had this huge kind of model. I was able to collapse different parts of it. I was able to zoom in to just the part that I care about and really get into the nitty gritty, the nuts and bolts of this model. I can't tell you that before I actually run an optimization, I'm checking out the N squared. I'm making sure that everything's connected where it should be. I'm making sure that things are lined up in the way that I think they are. If, I am, if I'm working on the solver hierarchy, if I want to make sure that my solvers are set up correctly, I turn solver view on. I, I zoom out here and then I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Are my solvers correctly set up for this group, right? Let me show you another very complex example. While this example that I showed you previously was made in Dimos, this kind of mission optimization tool, I'll now take a look at one from PyCycle, an engine design tool. Here, it's so cool. We've got a lot going on. We've got these upper triangular variables that are coupled. We also have these lower triangular variables coupled. You can kind of see some clear groupings, not only in the solver side, but right here we see this nice kind of square, another square here, and another square here. Information from design is being passed, boom, boom, down here. Boom, boom, over here. And then within each one of these squares, we have this kind of feedback coupling. I can click it to keep it open. I can click it there. I can click that there. Wow, this is, this is pretty helpful for me. I can see where all my variables are coming in, where they're going out, and, and get a feel for this. Now, the neat part about this, you know, it, it, opens up like this. It kind of has an understandable view. This is hiding a lot of information. It's hiding it for your benefit. You don't want to see everything that's going on here, but maybe I do. Maybe I want to zoom into this HPC group. 
oh my gosh, there's so much going on here. I can expand it. I can click. I can take a look at all the details. This is wonderful. Because of this, I can interactively interrogate my model, see all the coupling, see everything that's going on. If you're looking at this and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. And there are so many solvers over here. There's so much coupling here. I would say, yeah, you should be overwhelmed. PyCycle is a very complicated engineering model. We need to be able to visualize all of these couplings, all of this model hierarchy, the solver setups, to understand what this model is actually doing. The N squared is a fantastic tool for doing that. The developers of PyCycle would have been lost without this N squared diagram trying to create such a complicated model. Additionally, whenever I use PyCycle, one of the first things I do is check out the N squared, make sure everything's connected correctly, make sure everything looks good. Here I've only scratched the surface of what the N squared diagram can be useful for. Depending on your purposes, it can be useful for all sorts of different things. For me, I like looking at the connections and the groupings, making sure that everything's lined up correctly. It can help you get the names of some variables if you don't know about them. There is so much going on here. It's a very dense piece of information. Additionally, because it's fully portable, I can just grab this HTML file and send it to one of my colleagues. They can open it, they can interpret it. We can do a screen share together. I can kind of point out where I think maybe something should be different. It's wonderful. I will continue to use this N squared diagram tool throughout the rest of the course. I will use it in many different lessons to kind of highlight things where we're debugging our solvers or explaining what models are, are doing when they're coupled together. So I really suggest playing around with this yourself. Check out the accompanying notebook, click through to some of the OpenMDO docs, and, and take a look at how you can use the N squared for your own models. I hope this was helpful. I hope that this kind of informal chat about what an N squared diagram is can help you use it in a good way for your models. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your days.